This is Trisha Lynn, and it is once again time to talk about Magic the Gathering um, on behalf of Geeking Out About. And today I have a special guest. You've seen him before, and uh, you know who he is, but I'll remind you anyways. Uh, go ahead and introduce my guest. His name is Michael Lee, and why don't you Hello. tell us a bit about yourself? Sure. Um, I am a uh, science fiction fan in Twin Cities. It's probably the best place I, I am known for a lot of stuff. I was involved in Convergence and continue to be involved in Convergence since almost the beginning. I got back into Magic the Gathering earlier this year. My brother worked at Wizards of the Coast oh, really? uh, for a while. Um, he, was on, he was on game design. Oh. Um, and, uh, and so he got me stuff last year and I was looking for, for a new activity uh, to pick up and I hadn't played Magic in many years. And it actually fit really good for kind of what I needed out of a hobby activity for a while. Mm -hmm. So it's it's actually been uh, uh, a lot of fun as as kind of a I mean new you know returning hobby this year. So actually in a year a year in review is actually really really uh, fitting at this time. <laughs> Thanks so much for teasing the topic of this uh, of this episode. We are going to be talking about the year. 2018 as it was in Magic the Gathering and 2018 was actually quite a momentous year um, it was the year of Magic's 25th anniversary oh. and as a result a whole lot of um, things were released like there were four sets that were released like they always are they did a draft set they had a master set and they had um, a D&D tie-in let's go ahead and talk about the uh, draft and master sets right now and I think you said you had something very special with you right now. Yeah, I figured while we're, we're talking of the uh, year in review um, that we have a um, pack of Ultimate Masters, um, <laughs> which is the the big spicy pack at the end of the year. It's supposedly their last um, Master Series, which is a reprint series of, of cards from Magic's history um that uh, and usually the the uh, peak ones are some of the more expensive ones that are out there um and so i have one of these uh, yeah i will uh, and you get to crack a pack exactly i figure that's yeah you want to start from the uh comments and go all the way up to the rear which i can do because it's an actually reverse order <laughs> um in the sense that yeah but most of the most of the other ones, you know, the commons aren't super exciting at this point. True. Uh, tell yep. me the name of the first card. Arena athlete. Athlete. Ooh. And this is a heroic card. It is yep. a one colorless and one red. Whenever you cast a spell that targets arena athlete, target creature and opponent controls can't block this turn. This is from Theros because it has the heroic keyboard. Yep. Um, that's actually pretty good. Not my pack one, pick one, but definitely oh, no, a pretty definitely good card. Nope. I really Next. like, the heroic oh. mechanic was really cool. It's one of the first mechanics I remember playing in a, um, when I started uh, drafting and building decks. It's, a, it's one of the first mechanics that I truly, truly loved. Like, heroic is great. Go ahead. The next is Tethmos High Priest. How do you spell that? T A T E T H M O S High Priest. Tetmos High Priest. Ooh, Cat Cleric for a two and a white. Creature Cat Cleric, another heroic card. When you cast a spell that targets Tetmos High Priest, return target creature card with converted mana cost two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. That is also pretty good. Yeah, and I think, and one of the things certainly in Ultimate Masters, and the, you know, they say in general, you know, while one of the themes is certainly how many expensive eternal format cards are in there, there are a lot of graveyard mechanic ones like this that pull things out of the graveyard. Um, yeah, and and so. it and they it is a sort of thing that would work with uh, um, mind undergrowth possibly. Yep. Mm -hmm. It like in a modern or commander deck. Yep. The next. 
is Vessel of Endless Rest. It's an artifact. Oh. Spell that? V-E-S-S-E-L uh-huh. of Endless, of endless rest. rest. All right. This is a three-mana artifact. When Vessel of Endless Rest enters the battlefield, put a target card from a graveyard on the bottom from a graveyard to... I'm mean, thinking it means put a target card from a graveyard on the bottom of... Oh, okay. So it's basically taking stuff from your graveyard and putting it back in your library. But on the At the bottom. bottom. So, so it's the, actually... You know, I think you'd be you'd certainly be more likely to play this in, you know, if someone had a big creature in their graveyard and you knew that they were going to be able to use that as a re resource, the graveyard is easier to access than the bottom of the library. Mm, yeah. No, I think and you're then, right about that. I think one of the reasons why they would... So you want to make sure that, you're, that whatever you play next has a shuffle effect. So yep. you can maybe get that somewhere well, else in your library. Or maybe... No, you want to put... You want to do it, you want to play a tutor next. Yeah, or whatever. You want to play a tutor so you can get the card. That would work, too. Yeah. There are or, a lot of different ones. Or, um, yeah, there's a lot of things you could do with this. I mean, th at first I didn't think this was a good card, and now I'm thinking it's pretty good. Go yeah. ahead. And then certainly just to being able to add one mana of any color. Yeah, no, that's... I'm, yeah, I'm sorry, I forgot that was the uh, other ability yep. was to add one mana of any color. Go ahead. The next one is Thermo Alchemist. Thermo Alchemist? Yep. T H E R M O. M O. Thermo Alchemist. I see. And it's hyphenated. This is a one, one, one mana, one red with Defender. Um, and when you tap it, it deals one damage to each opponent. That's good. And when you cast an instant or sorcery spell, sorcery spell untap Thermo Alchemist. This card's great. This card is pretty good. Yep. This is a great card for any spells heavy deck. Um, it's a pinger, and then you'll get it back next time. So, yeah, this is good. This is so good. Next card. Rickerbo Elder. W-I-C-K-E-R-B-O-U-G-H. Ah. This is a three, uh, three and a green. Four. Yeah, yep. three and a green. It enters the battlefield with a net with a minus one minus one counter on it. For one green, you remove a counter and destroy a target artifact or enchantment. Um, and this is a the creature is a four four, so you're not going to have a worry poop with it coming in with negative counters on it. This was no other than Almond Kitten Hour of Dev Devastation. Were there any other sets that had minus one minus one counters? You know? Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure over the history. That was a big one. But yeah, they've... Yeah, the, yeah. I can understand why these are all great cards in the uh, Ultimate Master set. Because again, I have no... You can put more counters on it, and then you can destroy other artifacts and enchantments. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's great. Next card. Next card. Dark Dabbling. Ah, this is from uh, Magic Origins, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, because I think it's this is such a Liliana card. Yeah, that's Liliana yeah. right there. Yeah, two, that's... two and a black. Instead, regenerate target creature and draw a card. With spell mastery, if there are two or more instants or sorcery cards in your graveyard, you can also regenerate each other creature you control. Wow. So regenerate means to just bring it back from the graveyard, right? Well, yeah, well, no, I don't. As I recall, I don't think it actually goes to the graveyard. It just it just comes back and survives lethal damage yeah. or destroy. Hmm. But it's useful. Yeah. Good little combat. Good it is combat actually. trick. Good combat mechanic too. All right, what's next? And this is shed weakness. Shed weakness. Oops. Yeah. One mat. One green mana. Uh, another instant target creature gets plus two plus two until end of turn, and then you can remove a one minus one one counter for it. So if you were to play this with the Wickerbo Elder, you get two. You would get two about two effects for the cost of one. 
because you play out your shed weakness for that one mana. You give your Wicker Boat Alder pluses, then you pay another green mana to remove one counter, destroy artifact swing. That sounds pretty good to me. What do you think? I don't know if those two combo very well, but but there are certainly things where. Oh yeah, there's lots of things you can do with yeah. that. I'm just thinking within within this. Pack. What we've seen. What yeah. We've seen. And All if right. you're, I mean, if you're playing pack rules with this, that's what I would do. <laughs> yeah. Next, Next card. Awful snout. How do you spell that? O f f a l s n o u t. Wow. One of my favorite creature <laughs> artists because it's so. That is pretty amazing. That is, yeah, okay. That is, I remember the last time we did this, you had a pig thing. <laughs> okay, so this is this is more in keeping more with that more pig thing. Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> Awful snout is to add a black creature with flash elemental. When it leaves the battlefield, uh, you can exile a target card from a battlefield, and you can pay its evoke cost. So that when you cast it for evoke, it's sacrificed when it enters the battlefield. Yeah. So it's just the effect. Yeah. So in other words, it comes in, blocks a thing. No. Hmm. It it comes in. You can remove something from the gra- from a graveyard, and you know, and and in particular, you could do that in response if they're going to pull something from the graveyard. Hmm. Um. Yeah. So. Or maybe if they, yeah, like, I could think it. I think it'd be good against um, rekindling phoenix. That I think yes, that would yeah, work. Yeah, that's what I would use that for. Yep. yep. Or at least use it against. Uh, what's the next card? Wingsteed Rider. Wingsteed Rider. Ooh, it's a Wingsteed Rider, flying heroic creature, human knight. Uh, when you cast a spell that targets it, put plus one plus one counter on it. That's no, there's nothing wrong with that at all. This is great. This would just go. This would go well in my in my uh, horse deck. Yep, <laughs> yep. I just... Like it's a sideboard in the horse deck because it does have a human in the art, but it's still in there. Uh, think, next card. I think this is the last of the commons. Think okay. twice. Think twice. Oh, I misspelled that. Ooh. Think twice. One in a, one in a blue instant draw card, and you can flashback it. This is so good. I've never had a chance to play with this card yet. This is so good. Uh, next card. All right. And our first uncommon is a good one. Chainer's Edict. Chainer's. Ooh. More flashback. One in a black, Chainer's Edict, target player sacrifices a creature, and you can flash it back for seven. That's five and, two, five and black black. That's really good. That's yep. pretty good. It's it's basically... Uh, there's nothing better than making somebody sacrifice their own creature. Exactly. Anyways. Actually, yeah. <laughs> What's the next card? Reviving Vapors. Oh my, I have the vapors. That's yep. a two, white and a blue. Instant, reveal the top three cards of your library. Put one of them in your hand. You gain life equal to the cards converted mana cost. Put all other cards revealed this way into your graveyard. Um, it's a very nice way to quickly gain life. Yeah. Depending on what kind of other cards you have in your deck. Yeah, and um, if you have other things that could pull them out again or do something else for the ones that you yeah. drop in. Gives you yeah, a little like bit of for filtering. Example, yeah, like in this in the same uh if again within the same pack, that card, uh Dark Dabbling, if you want to go white, blue, black, you'd pair this with Dark Dabbling and then um Where are you? Yeah. 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 That's what you would do. That would be good. That would be good for that kind of situation. Alright, what's the next card? Murderous Red Cap. And this is a two hybrid, hybrid black red. Um, it's a goblin assassin. Ooh, more goblins. 
Yep. When it enters the battlefield, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. With a persist count, with a persist mechanic, when it dies, if it had no one, no minus ones, minus ones, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control with a minus one, minus one on, on it. Yeah, and I think actually that's the combo of where we had the shed weakness would mm -hmm. be useful with those two if you were, you know, in a deck that would have both of those. Mm -hmm. So. Because then you could pull that persist, and the advantage of that would is, would even be because persist, you know, the advantage of persist is you get is that it would, one, yeah, the one one, and it would come back again. Yeah. So yeah. so you could persist even more, you know, a whole nother time. Yeah. Uh, so you you know it'd be pretty pretty effective. So All right. basically a modern state, uh, a modern uh, a modern combo ish kind of thing. Yeah yeah yeah. All right. What's next? And our rare is seize the day. Ooh. And now I have the uh, song from uh, Newsy stuck in my head, but let's go on. It's a three, uh, three and a red. Sorcery, untapped target creature. After this main phase, there's an additional combat phase, and you can flashback it. Oh my god, you have a great card. How yeah. much is this worth? I have, <laughs> let's no, idea. Find I have out. no idea. I have no idea. <laughs> I'm just going to take a look really quick. Oops. Um, okay, hold on. Uh, let's see. Um, seize the day. Wow. Okay, so according to um, deckbox.org, if you were to uh, try and sell this on deckbox, you could expect to get... Uh, hold on. Whoops. Where'd it go? There it is. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, stop doing that. There we are. Nope. This is so uh, unprofessional. Okay, so it says here, if you were to try and sell this on deckbox.org, you can get between almost a dollar and 350 So you did pretty well. Mm, you almost... Yeah. I think almost barely, no. <laughs> you almost, uh, like, you almost bought another booster, pa uh, uh, booster uh, pack with this. Not of ultimate. Not master of ultimate pack masters, no. Ones. But of, like you got another boost back of something else. But I would not trade this for anything. That is great. That is a great, great card. And the last and the foil is a, just a foil common, um, which is faithless looting. Oh, faithless looting. Hold on. Uh, that's red sorcery. Draw two cards, then discard two cards. Oh filtering like it and you can flashback yeah this sounds pretty good yeah, all of this sounds pretty good I, I red shiny is always shiny so and i and i got a citizen token mm -hmm. I, which is always nice. where did citizen tokens come from i don't remember off the top of my head as i said this this was all one of the fun things about the 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 masters series is since i would not played magic in many years mm -hmm. is is it's like it gives you a crash course in the years that you missed <laughs> um and uh because you know and 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 especially you know they have some of you know the greatest hits package that mm -hmm. some of, that some of these are yeah so that was actually a really fun crack a pack i'm glad we did that yeah that was that was and and i feel satisfied because there wasn't, you know, it, if packs are ten dollars each or so, using, you know, it's not great when you get a three dollar rare. But <laughs> I've, I don't feel bad overall. I mean, I mean, one of the big, th one of the things, especially that, because I did get a whole, uh, I did get a whole box of Ultimate Masters, Ooh. and and so while you're doing, you know, it's like an individual pack. Mm -hmm. The variance is too high. You get three dollar ones, but mm -hmm. but over an entire you know over several of them, you're you know it's you know there are you know many 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 twenty dollar fifty dollar cards in there. So and then you can also build cubes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so so Ultra Masters was not the only thing that came out this year in uh, twenty eighteen. There's some other special um, sets that came out as well, such as. Uh, Master 25, which was the 25th anniversary Masters set. Um, do I have any of those cards? 
I did. I, I do have. I mean, I got some because I played earlier in the in the uh -huh. year. I don't have uh -huh. any. I don't have a fresh pack. Let me see. No, I mean, I, as I'm, I'm trying to figure out if yeah. I have any in my collection. Because I did a when we were at um, convergence, there was a chaos draft. Yeah. And, oh yeah. No, I have a couple. I actually do have a couple. So looking through my inventory of the cards that I have, um. I've got Inox Survivalist, which is a... Whoop, can't see that very well. Inox Survivalist is... Whoops. It's, it, it's a Megamorph. Um, mm -hmm. One and a green. When you turn it face up, you destroy a target artifact. Green just loves destroying things and just making things very, very unhappy. And then I have Assembly Worker. Um... And then I also have Elvish Aberration with Forest Cycling, which I'd actually never encountered before as far as a mechanic. Corona's Zealot, which is another Morph creature. I think Morph was introduced in Dragons of Tark in the Tarkir set, if I'm remembering correctly. I've got the Perilous Mirror. Um, when it dies, it deals two damage. And then Willy Loxanon, because why not? Um, when I was drafting... When I drafted these cards out of the um, Chaos set, I think what I was trying to do was build, like, I, I was heavy into green during yep. that Chaos draft. And I think that, like, even though these cards are not worth much, they did really well in my deck. They were mm -hmm. really great for me. So, um, so that was my experience with the Masters. What, how did you feel about it? I, I mean, I I had a fair amount of fun, and and I think one of the the conceits of that set was that they had a card from each set over the twenty five years. Yeah, that so was really nice. That was, I mean, you know, I I think from from that certainly from that perspective, it was it was this neat historical look at the twenty five at the twenty five years, you know, twenty five year history. Um, and uh, and and certainly there, you know, there there were there were some fun set, you know, some fun things from that, um, you know, and and you know, I think uh, I know that there are certainly segments of the magic community that were like, there's not enough value in that set, but for a draft experience, I had fun when I played it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it it was really nice. Um. Did you get a chance to do anything with Battle Bond? I did one. I did one Battle Bond event um, when it came out. I'm not a huge two-headed giant player, mm -hmm. um, but uh, you know that uh, that was you know there was certainly some you know it was kind of neat, and and I think there were some you know some neat cards for that that piece of it. Yeah, um, I mean Battle Bond. So Battle Bond for. Uh, everybody else who's listening to this, that bond is a, a set which is a, it's a specifically for drafting, and specifically drafting two-headed giant, which is one of the yeah. more casual formats of play. Um, the concept behind battle uh, two-headed giant is that there's two players on a team, they have their own decks that they build build out of a communal set of either sealed or communal draft cards that they get. Um, and uh, you, everybody plays out their own spells. You can't share mana between spells most of the time. And you can, you also share a life total, but you don't share libraries. And you can, and the thing about Battle Bond is that it introduced a mechanic where you can use some of your mana to pay for your partner's spells, which I think was an interesting way to add that to the Battle Bond mechanic. Um, yeah. So what my husband and I decided to do is we decided to, uh, um, I bought six, I bought six packs and we actually did a bit of, we did a bit of, um, uh, we did a bit of a uh, two-headed giant. No, not two-headed giant. We played pack wars with it, which really wasn't the thing to do, but I wasn't about to buy 12 cards. Um, and of the cards that I got, there's, there's a couple that I'm really happy that I did get, um, you can see it right there. Oh, Rifling yeah. Rifling is a really good card. It is... You can't see that part very well. 
Let me change that. Oops. Hold on. Yeah, because I really, the art on that one. Yeah, I, it was, it's, it's really nice. Oh, still can't see it. Hold on. Okay. Oh, where'd you go? Ah, okay. Hang on. Okay, bright lighting. <laughs> I wish you could see this better, but it is a, um, it's a creature. And again, I did pretty well. That's a mythic rare. And it is a 3-3, three, three, and it's for 1 and 2 white, and it gains vigilance to under turn, it gains lifelink to under turn, and it gets, and you can save it, you can bring it back to your hand. Um, it's actually really cool. In fact, why don't I just bring it up in Gatherer? That makes more sense. Yes. Ugh. There it is. That's the card. That's the card I have. It's really awesome. And then um, another card that I, the another card I have, which I did not put in my commander deck, is Bountiful Promenade. That is a land. Um, it enters tapped unless you have two or more opponents. Which again, so this is a very commander specific, two-headed giant specific card. And then the next, the, the third card I have that is uh, fairly um, high costed um, and also a rare is Stolen Strategy. At the beginning of your upkeep, I exile the top of each opponent's library until end of turn. You may cast these non land cards and you can spend mana as though it was mana of any cost to spend spells. I think that with this, with Act of Treason, could, could make a good basis for. A really cool stealing your cards deck. Yep. Yeah. So I, I I wish I had had a chance to um, draft Battle Bond when it was current, but you know that's just how things go sometimes. Yeah, and it was only a couple weeks. Yeah, it was yeah. only in standard. It was only supported for a couple weeks, and I don't think I've ever noticed anybody holding or promoting any Battle Bond fans recently. It's nope. all been, you know, draft nope. and nope. Drake, standard nope. FNM, showdown, etc. Yep, yep. So the last thing that came out this year was the Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica. That's basically all the non-expansion set stuff. Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica, I actually wrote about wrote about that off for Twin Cities Geeks. You can uh, check out the article. I'm going to put the link here. Yeah, there. I'm going to put the link there to the article that you can read. Um, I had a lot of fun playing it. Um, I think I was talking it over with some friends and I think what we decided is that as a setting for a D and D campaign, it's really great. Um, if you want to throw a Ravnica themed adventure at your, um, regular D and D group and they've never played magic before, this is a good way to interest them in the world of Ravnica and therefore the ideas behind the how the lore behind magic works um and i think like i was talking about it with my, with uh, gwen uh, pearson who was the dm who ran the one shot for the uh um that one day the the magic weekend day that i was there and she and i actually basically agreed that um when it came to uh guildmaster's guide to ravnica it's it's great for getting people who have never played magic into playing magic, but if you're a D and D player only, if you're a magic player though, who's never played D and D, I don't know, or maybe it was the other way around. Basically, for someone who's a hardcore D and D player, um, this is good for like a one shot or two, but you're not going to do a whole campaign set in a replica because modifying the modifying magic creatures to abide by D&D rules is, has been proven kind of interesting. Like, there, um, there's a Discord that I'm on, and we were talking about the GM's Guide to Ravnica, 
and they're trying to decide, okay, how would you do, how would you create Emmerich cool as a d and character? Or how would you do Avicen? Or how would you do, like, what if you wanted to introduce an, a non-player character who is a planeswalker? What kind of stats would that planeswalker have? And so that's something that we were puzzling about. And so in the end, we're just kind of not sure exactly who this product is for. Any thoughts? I, I don't I mean, I think a big part of that, I don't have a whole lot of thought specifically on that. I think, I think there is definitely the overlap of the, the people that are both um magic players and role player you know role playing game and D D you know D mm-hmm. in particular. You know, I think I think that overlap is probably the key the key target for it. I'm not sure if it is necessarily something by in and of itself you would move from one to the other. I don't I don't actually feel like that that's the the pro, you know, that that's the case for it. I, I I suspect it's it's probably best targeted for people that are already in the overlap, not creating the overlap, because yeah. um, I think I mean they they serve different they did they serve different purposes as games, mm-hmm. um, and and you don't necessarily need one for the you know for the other i think it's you know from from a uh, a brand you're know, not outside of the game is kind of the magic is a brand side of it um and dnd is a brand side of it that's probably a good thing from that way because i i think as you have the various rules and and settings between that, you know, part of what you you want to do is is cross that over into other areas, and you see that in other games as well. And and in fact, you know, I you know, if you you have game, you know, games that are are expanding into into other entertainment fields, um, you know. Than than seeing how both of those games can do those sorts of crossover uh, is kind of interesting, um, and I'd actually be just as interested to see some of the D and D themes. You know, see the revert. You know, see some of the things in the reverse direction as well. What would happen if you took a classic D and D setting and made it? A re- you know, made it a, a special magic set. I don't, I don't, you know, uh, I don't know if it's actually possible in that. I don't know if that would flow as well because you have so much tied to the color identities, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, or and and then you get overlap of of things that are you know the horror tropes, the horror the horror worlds of D and D, you know, um, you know Ravenloft kind of stuff mapped to Innistrad. Exactly. Yep. Almost exactly. So I don't know if it would get you anything new. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then another thing, like just to, so to bridge the uh, talking about the uh, sets with talking about uh, just the year for Magic, uh, there was also a GP that was held in Minneapolis. Uh, we are one of the hub sites for GPs, and maybe next year we'll next year we'll talk about. Um, the change to the GP structure and the whole esports thing, but that's a topic for a different podcast. Um, Magic twenty five, the Ma- the Pro Tour Magic twenty fifth anniversary was also held in Minneapolis, like the weekend after GP Minneapolis, and almost everybody who was everybody was there at the event. Um, I know you and I went uh, separately. Um, I had a great time. I didn't have a lot of. I was only being able to play for one day, so. I didn't get a chance to do too much there. There were some great folks that I met. Like, I met the folks at Weird Cards. They're a um, nonprofit in Rochester. They're a social, uh, a nonprofit social club where they teach kids how to play magic. And they, all the money that's generated by their social club is donated to uh, charitable organizations. 
um, which I think is great. They're going to be doing an event this coming February at Lordstone Coffee and Games, which I hope to get myself to. Um, and they introduced, they have a new, they have their own format, uh, their own singleton format called um, Oathbreaker, which I was introduced to it and I loved it. I had so much fun playing cool. Oathbreaker. And it was actually, it's a multi, it's a multiplayer format as well. It's like Commander, it's like if you took Commander and Brawl and they had a baby, that's what Oathbreaker would be. With a little extra twist, because every child has something that it is improved upon on the previous generation. So, yeah, again, I'll, we'll, I'll probably check out Oathbreaker some other time. Again, that's a, another topic for a different podcast. Yes. But, like, I have so much fun at GPs. Like, I went, I, I went to the one in 2016. And I have footage from that, which I'll probably edit into a video at some other time. I have some footage from this year, which I was going to put together as a short story, which, but I kind of ran out of time. Uh, but hopefully I'll be showing those videos off in the next coming months. But I had a great time there. I just had so much fun. I met a lot of great people and I got to play a lot of magic. Didn't do too well, to be honest. But I still had a lot of fun, and I bought tokens from the artists there, and I I got some art. I got some, I got to donate money to the charity, and it was just so much fun. And I got the basis for my very first commander deck by turning the Oathbreaker deck into a commander deck. So now I have my own very own my very own commander deck, which I was able to build as part of what I did at GP Minneapolis. Um, did you play in the main event? No, I didn't do the main event. I'm not that competitive. Um, <laughs> but I did a lot of a lot of side events and a lot of the chaos drafts. Um, and I find that works actually really well for my kind of temperament as a player. Um, mm -hmm. and uh, and and had a great deal of fun. And I also, with the other thing about the weird uh, um, as someone who plays a lot, a fair amount of limited, you know, that's probably my primary format. Um, the the uh, other the other thing um, that I enjoyed a great deal about it was that uh, I was able to donate a lot of my spare bulk commons to the Weird Cards group. Mm -hmm. And it made um, me feel good so about getting them a lot of stuff. Because you know it was gonna yeah, I got, I got, weird. yeah, I got rid of all of, I got rid of a lot of my older cards, and also um, was you know, yeah, you know, just kind of you know stuff that's not worth anything, or worth mm -hmm. you know you'd get a couple bucks, but mm -hmm. you just were able to clear them out, and then they repurpose them and make, you know, whether it's commander decks or whatever, whatever yeah. sort of pack. Yeah, and they also they 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 make um, how to play magic sets they give yep. to hospitals and schools and stuff and i think that's yep. great yeah it's so and, fun and it's and 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 it get me you know it means that it's a lot better than just you know if you're dra if you go to a store every week or every other week or or on a fairly regular basis and and draft you just collect cards that you, you that just you're never going to use again and and they're not and they're not worth selling. I mean, mm -hmm. the rare, you know, the rare, you know, or, or barely worth selling. Yeah. I mean, you're going to get a couple bucks. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you're, you know, so, you know, being able to donate them is just as, as satisfying. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And, uh, and it was, it was, you know, and, and some of the, um, the, it's Nissa cosplay, I think is the, is her Twitter handle. Yeah. Had an amazing costume. Oh God, she, I love that. Yeah, you know, and was it the one with the angel with the, the with the angel wings? Yeah, angel wings. Yeah, um, oh, those wings. The wingspan was so big. Yeah, and it was all automatic. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of good. Yeah, there were a lot of good cosplayers uh, at the event too. Yeah, and I think I think one of the things, and I think in the, and I think this from a year in review side, you see those bits where where part of the theme that I think magic is trying to do as a, th as a whole is how to position itself as both a, <coughs> a game and an entertainment thing mm -hmm. uh, to reach out to lots of different audiences. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's got a 
very nice competitive angle mm -hmm. um, that has, you know, but it, but also it's a cash, you know, it can be a casual game and it really isn't just one game. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of, it's a lot of different ranges of types of games and material. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Indeed, indeed, indeed. So that actually covers all of the, uh, um, the stuff that happened outside of the expansion sets, but let's talk about these expansion sets. Well, uh, uh, that came out. Um, all of them are currently in standard. And if we were to just go to uh, a remap, we can see what kind of cards there are. Um, and we can probably just go to it, go through it like set by set. Um, so the first, uh, the first uh, set that came out was Rivals of Ixalan. And this is a set where um, uh, I forget what the returning mechanics were. No, ascend was a was a new mechanic. Yep. Where if you have um, if you have uh, more than ten, at least ten permanents, you get what's known as the city's blessing, and you get that for the rest of the game, even if you lose the permanents to make um, uh, up a, a entire uh, entire set. Um, actually, let me go ahead and just change this again so you can see all the cards, including the ones that I have. Um, let's just change this. So, I didn't get, I had, I don't have a lot of Rivals of Ixlan in my existing, um, arena library, um, because I've done a lot of drafting with the other sets, but, so sure. I don't know too much about the Rivals of Ixlan cards, um. One highlight cards for me have been um, this Zatalfa Primal Dawn, which is Flying, Double Strike, Vigilance, Trample, Indestructible, and a Kitchen Sink. It is one of the best cards you're going to find. It is actually not that expensive in Paper Magic, and this card can totally win games. This is your bomb. Like, if you see this, pack one, pick one, you're just going to take this and know you're going into white. Um... Do you have any favorite cards that you can think of, or? I, yeah, the el elder, you know, all the elder dinosaurs were a lot of fun, and and rivals, rivals was the first uh, kind of set that I was getting back into playing regular. Like the first, uh, the first event mm -hmm. that I ended up going to was um, the rivals pre-release, uh, and so I went to that, um, and and so I. You know the the various elder dinosaurs were were top to you know top you know top of the the fun big rare <laughs> cards, um, but a lot of uh, a lot of the other stuff, especially in draft, you know the bread and butter stuff that always you know would be sailor means is just to, if surprisingly you know surprisingly useful as a common. Mm -hmm. Um, with, you know, cause it would let you play multiple, you know, more and more colors. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you were lucky enough to get ravenous chupacabra, <laughs> um, to, to be able to, uh, take something out. Um, and, uh, but it was, they had a, you know, that was, that was really getting, you know, the set that, that got me back that, that was like, oh, this is, this is a fair amount of fun. Mm -hmm. um and and got me back into it but like you know uh and and so that was that was yeah there's a lot of really good big gigantic dinosaurs that are really viable yeah. in standard right in right now like galta primal hunger that 10 10 um 10 green green where it costs x less or x is the total power of creatures you control which means you could mean that you could get this out for for very little mana like if you're smart in how you uh set yep. up your creatures yep um yeah there's a lot of more focus energy again um and then you've got your standards like plummet um italic primal storm and other elder dinosaur when it attacks you exile the top card of each player's library and you can cast any number of cards non-land cards exiled this way without paying their mana costs this is bonkers six six for six like that yep. i feel like that's under costed um this is that rekindling phoenix i was telling you about yep. that thing i don't like playing against this thing which is why when i had enough wild cards to get a mythic rare i got one myself yep um let's see what else do we have um you know more pirates 
more goblins. Um, the black dinosaur is Tetsamog Primal Death. Um, when you reveal, you can reveal it from your hand, put a prey counter on target creature, and when it enters the battlefield finally, you would destroy each creature that have the prey counter on it. This is, again, a amazing you, card. If you're lucky enough to get one of those, yeah. I had one draft where that was, it was so much fun. Because <laughs> each time, each time, you know, or if you get it early, you know, in one of your early hands, you're just slowly marking it's like, hey, for death I have and, this, but you can't do anything kind of, about it because it's in my hand. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it's a lot of fun. There's also um, uh, uh, that Ravenous, Ravenous Chupacabra. Yep. This is such... This is almost like that artifact meteor person. Yep. Oh, yeah. Except it only costs four mana, whereas yep. the meteor costs seven. And I don't know how this is, again, it feels low-costed to me. It is low-costed. That's why it's really sweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because both a body and a kill spell. Right. Yeah. The Elder Dinosaur in blue is the Nezahal Primal Tide. Um, can't be countered. You don't have a maximum hand side. Whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, you draw a card. And then you discard three cards, exile it, and then basically flicker it back. And it'll be tapped under your control. Um, yeah, this is pretty cool. Basically, I've seen commander decks with this, um, as its commander, and although, unfortunately, those decks have not gone off yet, um, everybody, because those decks that I've seen where Nez Hall is your commander, they haven't able been to go off because everybody's afraid of it. So they yeah. try and kill it as much as they can. <laughs> and then, uh, then you've got the, uh, um, the white one, we already talked about that. So, yeah, that's a lot of good stuff. Another mechanic that they had um, uh, were the Forerunners. Yep. And it looks like there's only four of them in this set. They were basically cards that find other cards and give lots of things, plus uh, they, they have, they, they have um, cards that find other cards that are of the same type, and then they do a thing every time another of that tribe comes in. White, of course, adds plus one, black minus one, red deals damage to creatures, and green puts more plus one counters on, like, itself. And so this became a staple of the uh, Merfolk decks. I know going into um, Winter Rivals came out, um, Merfolk became much more of a thing when this, when this was added to the uh, standard rotation. So uh, Rivals was a good set, I think. I think. And if we were going to make a card out of a deck out of all the rivals cards that I have, where would you start? Because I do have the the, the primal dinosaur. Yeah. I don't think I have any of the. I do have Kamana. We could yeah. do we could do a Merfolk deck, but I don't think I have enough other Merfolk. Yep. Yeah. Um, I do have the Sphinx. Yep. Yeah. And I've got Geholta. What else do I have? I have quite a few dinosaurs, I believe. Oh, and I do have a Tali as well. Yeah, I kind of feel like you might be good for, like, red, red, black, something like that. I don't know, yeah. Okay. Not necessarily, I, you know. So, if we're talking creatures that are in red and black. So, a pirate, a pirate. A yeah, pirate deck is the, one, the two, or both. Let's see how many pirates I have in Ixalan. I've got three, four, five, six, seven pirates. Don't think that's right. enough pirates. Yeah, I, I mean, I would, out. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have it like a strong pirate theme necessarily, but because I'm thinking, I'm thinking you, you have rekindling phoenix and Atali, mm -hmm. you know, Atali is your top. Yep. You know, and your top ones. So we've got a Chali. And then we've got the Phoenix. Yeah. Um, that's our top end. Where's our bottom end? Yeah. And that and Definitely. Dive Fleet Poisoner, yes. Put two of them yeah. in. Yeah. Two grassing but... scoundrels, both of the Chupacabras. Yeah. Ooh. I like that. Swashbuckler gets in. Uh, this is good. 
Yeah. Frog Goblin, not really a fan. What else do I have more of? This is great. Actually, let's go Raptor. I like Raptor. Charging Tuscadon. This is crazy. Um, this is also crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I've never actually played with that one before. So where we're at right now is 11 creatures. You need some more. I need, need some more three drops. Uh, yeah. So where are we in three? Um... And those, those both black ones are... Ah. Uh, this is kind of risky. Yeah, but you probably have a pirate. You have a few pirates already. No, that's true. Oh, yeah, we'll put them in. Put both of them in. All right, so... And, it. and... Uh, Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I was thinking... So that's it for Rivals of Rixlon, as far as creatures are concerned. But yeah. let's look at the uh, spells now. That we want to talk about. Which I do not have a lot of. So we're going to have to pull from the other sets. Um, I have one each in Ixalan. But the ones that I have are really good. Uh, Reckless Rage is a good card. Mutiny is a good card. Um, and Dark Inquiry is a more expensive um, divest. Yeah, I am. So I wouldn't take that. <laughs> um... I'd probably just put in Buccaneer's Bravo. To be honest, from these five, I would just put Buccaneer's Bravo in. Yeah. All right. So the next set that also came out this year was, of course, Dominaria, which is great. Uh, Dominaria is a set that I really, really, really loved um, because of how much lore was in it. And because I actually do not know much about Magic's history. And so many of these characters and creatures and lands were very very new to me and the thing i loved about the thing i love the most about dominaria are these enchantments these legendary enchantments where um they work like they're they're like planeswalkers in that they come in with counters on them and they, they're also like planeswalkers in which when you finally remove the last counter they go away but these the the idea is that the the mechanic persists for at least three turns so you get three turns to do something really cool and there were different types of mechanics and all of these were actually um uh, uh depicting different events in dominaria's history and you could just learn so much about the lore by reading all of the uh, enchantment cards you know, and they refer to different things in the Dominaria history. So this was a great set for people coming back to Magic for a long time, wouldn't you say? Oh yeah, well that was the big that was the big kind of draw and and one of the reasons the the story of how I got started you know was getting getting in in back in particular was I played you know, I, I played a fair bit back when Magic first came out in the early you know, some of those early in some of, of not the early earliest sets in that sense, because so I don't have any of the super super obscenely <laughs> valuable cards, but but the, uh, um, but then but a lot of these early you know the the early one you know the early things like the Antiquities War, and Time of Ice, um, resonated really hardly you know heavily from that nostalgia point. Um, and I knew that was coming up, and so I was like, oh, I'll play, start playing before the set, that set. Um, and as I said, my brother was working at Wizards of the Coast at the time of, uh, that they were in development on this. Uh, and so I, and so he, you know, with, and so he was like, oh, you'll probably enjoy Dominaria. And mm -hmm. he was definitely right. Um, <laughs> and it was, uh, um, and, uh, and that was, that was, you know, and I think, I think a lot of that, uh, and and the sagas were great. I, I thought that was a, a really neat new addition uh, to the game, uh, and they all and the art and the art was just amazing on all of them because they all, in the, you know, were trying to do art styles that were like in world, um, and and so they they looked great and um, 
And so, you know, I think that that was very exciting. Mm -hmm. Like another thing, they introduced the first colorless um, planeswalker, where he was corn, I think. I don't think, has there ever been another uh, colorless planeswalker before? Yeah, the original, there was no, there was a Karn earlier. Oh, okay, so they, so, so they basically reprinted, they printed a, a new Karn. It's a new Karn. Okay. Yeah, so, so, yeah. And the other thing, too, is that they changed how a uh, legendary creature... They changed how legendary uh, creatures look by giving them a brand new type of frame. Yep. Um, which is... It's largely a mechanic. It, it's very much an objects user experience type of thing because when you see this kind of board, you know it's a special card. You also know yep. you're only supposed to have one with that same name on it. Yeah, uh, on the field. Out of one time. Yep. Um, but then... Um, and what was the other thing that was... Oh, yeah. The other thing is that they, they introduced the idea that um, the, the historic type of um, card, and historic is basically any that's an artifact, a legendary, and a saga. So now there's a new card type that you need to think of when it comes to uh, spell interactions. But I think that Dominaria may be the only set that has historic as an ability word. Um, you never know. The other thing that's really, really cool about the set from a um, person who's getting into the lore point of view is that um, you are introduced to characters who are related to existing characters, such as um, two, there are two uh, uh, Teferi Planeswalkers, and he's a, a creature from the... Uh, he's a Planeswalker from the original Dominaria, very storied, very has a very great history in the um, in the world, and of course, Niambi is one of his descendants, and so you get relatives of people from the original set. Um, one of my favorite, one of my favorites is a legendary creature named uh, where is where are they? Where did they go? Where did they go? If they're if they're Jetsa, legendary, Jetsuko! Tetsuko Umezawa. Yes. Because he can't be blocked. <laughs> He's yep. a one power creature who can't be blocked. And he makes all your other tiny one power creatures unblockable, which is great if you like playing with very tiny cards. Um, but yeah, it, a lot of fun stuff with relatives of the, the uh, existing cards. And so, like, that was really, really fun. Um, so, we are currently still in red and black. And if we were to add creatures from the set, who would you add? Because I have, when speaking of legendaries, I have Whisper, which will get people back to the graveyard. Uh, get a, it's a, basically it's a tier for one. I can sack two creatures to get a, another creature back from the graveyard. I do have Demon Lord Bells and Knock. Oh, um, that goes in. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm um, a, Big okay. fan of the demon lord. Yeah, uh, flying with trample, and then you exile things. I've never had a chance to play this, so we'll see how it we'll see how it goes. Um, other legendary creatures I have, I've got the famine incarnate, um, where when it enters the battlefield, up to one target player's life total becomes half their starting, rounded down. So in other words, you you deal ten damage for eight mana. Yeah. Like, in a regular game, in a regular two-player game, we're dealing 10 damage for 8 mana. In a commander game, we're dealing 20 damage for 8 mana, which is ludicrous. Um, but you're not going to make it your commander, because it takes so long to come out. Um, other cards I have, which are really cool. Siege Gate Commander is really good for pinging at um, Planeswalkers from afar. Um... I don't have any red black except for this legendary dragon. And if we were putting the dragon in, that means we get to put some green in. We would be three colors. What are your thoughts? Always pass. I mean I mean I I think I think the the one thing it would be as we go through the rest of the set, we will be able to get you know, for I'm assuming if we're going all through the the whole the whole mm -hmm. year, you know, whole cards of the year, mm -hmm. we'll have opportunities to get the um, green black. You know, the the 
the green black dual mm -hmm. you know dual lands mm -hmm. if you have any of those i do have some so, of those yes so so yeah they certainly do have the capability of um and we don't have a seven drop yet yeah it's true all right so now we're in green um so yeah which means now we're gonna <laughs> We'll go back and add other green. But we're going to modify this. I was going to say, so, wait, I need to put some Lana War Elves in. We definitely need to be able to ramp into stuff. All right, so next set that came out this year was the Magic Corset 2019. Corset 2019, uh, they brought back corsets. They uh, Basically, they thought they were going to be eliminating them, but then they found out that eliminating the corset was a mistake. Because it was, it made it harder for people to just get into the game and um, and not jump into the middle of a set. Um, so they brought back the concept of corsets. Now Dominaria was considered a corset by itself, but then they did also release M19 the same year. Um, cards that I really liked from here. Um, this is good. It's very it's good. White doesn't often have removal, other than you know things like the more expensive pacifism. Mm -hmm. But being able to do this was great. This is you don't often get to do this in white, so being able to do that is fun. Um, Pegasus Corsair is another card that's great. Um, it gives another attacking creature flying until on turn. But as far as like higher costed cards and more. Um, fancier things you've got uh you've got more legendaries coming out lots of angel stuff look at this this is crazy yeah uh, three white white sorcery destroy all creatures or all artifacts and enchantments we're mostly gonna do the first one unless you're going up against a commander deck that is all artifacts which i have gone up against before and that was not very fun at all um yeah. You've well, got... and also, and also, the enchantment removal, especially if you're fighting against someone that has something like History of Benalia or something like that, yeah. you might be able yeah. to. Yeah. You might be able to remove remove a saga before the ultimate, which mm -hmm. is always one of the tricky, you know, tricky things if you're not main, you know, if you're, you know, trying to deal with uh, mm -hmm. enchantment removal. Speaking of enchantments, this is a mainstay of the enchantment deck. Um, side Master Thopterus, when you cast an artifact spell, you create a 1 1 colorless Thopter with flying, and then when you sacrifice two artifacts you get, uh, and, and pay uh, one and a blue, you can draw a card. So, again, this is a, this is a mainstay of the artifacts deck. Um, so was Skilled Animator, because when it comes in, any artifact you have would become a 5 5 creature, so that's also very good to have. Um, this is also part of the artifact deck. Which I've actually never had a chance to make yet. Um, uh, let's see what other cards are here that were great that I got to play with or that I have. I mean, Child of Night is always going to be part. Is always going to be something that comes back. It's just a good card. This is a great card for uh, graveyard. Um, yep. And uh, dark uh, black decks. Uh, this has been very dangerous to play against for me. Um, this is fun. It's fun to put this in. Um, I haven't got a chance to go with this one yet. Um, this has been fun to play. The Demon of Catastrophe. 6-6 six, six for two, and a bl uh, two, two, two black black. This is pretty cool. Yeah. And it's easy to do when you have things like, I don't know, goblins or saplings or, you know, tiny one ones that you don't really care about. This yep. is a great removal spell. Um... This is dangerous to play against, so vampire decks love this card. Um, what else? Again, this is just good for. Um, this is just good for. Again, this is this is a very much a uh, all around good way to just put good cards in your deck. Um, you've, any card with an ultra win condition is fun. Um, this one where it says if, at the beginning of your keep of control four more demons with different names in the game is actually part of Liliana's backstory, which I found really interesting. Yep. Um, what else? I love Active Treason so much. I never got a chance to play with it before, and now it's here, and I love it. Oh, yeah. Um, what else? This, is, this was fun. 
Um, if you like dragons, you've got your legendary dragon here. Lathless Dragon Queen. Flying with, a... Yeah, whenever a non-token dragon enters the battlefield, you create a 5-5 dragon with flying. And then for one in a red dragon, all dragons you control get plus one plus out on under turn. That was very good to use. Um, and now, actually, we can put the Land War Elves in now when we start uh, to the building part. Um, so the thing, I, I guess the thing I like the most about core sets is that it reintroduces huge mechanics that you forgot about and helps you get a better understanding of the game. You've also got new planeswalkers such as Vivian Reed, who I use a lot. Um, Palaka Worms back. And what else has been really good? Dra Draconic Disciple is a great card. Yep. I love that card so much. Um, then I have another, uh, I have another Elder Dragon, um, which has been fun to play, but we couldn't put it in this deck unless we want to go five color, and actually I don't, no. or, no. I don't suggest we do. Oh, th I have a copy of this one in real life, the Vivictus of Mani. I pulled this from a pack, and I'm so happy. <laughs> um, what else was good? Uh, Arcane Encyclopedia has been great. Uh, that's really fun to do in, um. Mill decks. I have a I have a mill deck right now that uses it. Um, yeah, especially you can combine it with the uh, enchantment that mills more. Mm -hmm. yeah. Indeed, indeed. Oh, and here's that moodier person I was telling you about. When it yep. enters the battlefield, you destroy target non land permanent, and uh, this costs more than the other one. Your other one we just put in. So, if we're and... thinking about putting cards in from putting creatures in from uh match 2019 and we are currently in jund uh what would you put in well what would you start with considering what we have which is dragon dinosaur demon phoenix dinosaur yeah we don't have a theme right now except no, for pirates. I <laughs> and i think as we go through you you let you lose the theme as you go step by step yeah um what but do our the... cards want to do, though? We want to attack. We definitely want to attack. Yeah, you're definitely going to be aggressive. Very aggressive. <sighs> I think Death Baron gets in. But only if we have other skeletons and zombies. Yeah, yeah. Oh, by the way, I'm sorry. One more, one more uh, card type that I forgot to, to uh, talk about, but I really should think think should be talked about are the horses. Oh and, yes. Uh, because now there is one horse monocolor plus diamond mirror. You can make a really crazy five color horse deck, which I have, and uh, I have one in arena. It's it's bonkers. It doesn't win all the time, but when it does win, it's pretty freaking amazing um and being being able to make a deck like this has just been really silly but fun but anyways i i digress i just love the horses so much all right so we're talking about john we're talking about creatures we're talking about things that are not just horses um we want to be aggressive plague mare is a good way to do that because yeah. it takes off it's a good early play because it removes a lot of things off the board right away Especially if they have been pumping out tokens. Um, Sky March Blood Letter is always good. This one brings stuff back. Yep, which is This good. is good for making people lose life a lot. Whenever you gain life, we don't have a lot of gain life in our deck. That's a that's a white black. Yeah, you, yeah. you need you need just by itself. It doesn't it doesn't do enough. This brings things back from the graveyard, which might be good for us. Um, this, whenever it attacks, opponents lose life. That, I think, goes in. How's our curve? Well, it's not really a curve right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's a three. It's a three drop. I mean, that's a three drop, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, it Yeah. Okay, so it'll go in. No, that's a four drop. A four drop. Sorry. We don't need another four drop. Okay, we don't need another four drop. So, in, in, in block ah, but... three, Sky Letter is good. Or Sky March Blood Letter is good. Yeah. It's a good early flyer, and it takes one point off, and it gives you one life, so that'll go in. Red threes. Dragon egg. I want dragon egg. Sure. 
I got that for a re I got that one for a reason. Gutter snipe's good, but we just keep... I, we don't have enough. We don't have really enough spells. Want... You're right. Yeah, you don't you're have not, this spells. is this is a creature one. This is an aggro card, definitely. It's gonna be easy to kill, but you're gonna get in. I don't know. Probably not lightning mare then. What are you thinking? Yeah, I well, especially if we're looking at three colors. Yeah, then you're, you're right. I mean, it's probably only you know splashing a third, but. Well, we could put more dragons in. That gives us starts giving up giving us a little bit of a theme. Mm -hmm. I like the um, I, the the thing I like about the first two ones, um, demanding dragon and you know and. Spark Tongue Dragon is both of them have that additional effect where they cause either a sacrifice or damage when they enter the battlefield. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I think like I would I would do Demanding Dragon because Demanding Demanding Stronger. Yeah, this is a five. five five for three. But then you actually also you're have really pay paying eight. And yeah. that's not great. Yeah, you actually have to pay for it. So we're definitely putting a lot of more elves in because we need to ramp. Yeah. We're putting druids in because we need to ramp. Um, I often uh, put in Elvish Rejuvenator just to get the mana that I need. Yep, I think that's a good one. That's one a good choice. Two. Well, let's put it. We'll put in two and we'll cut later. Yep. Um, do we want a Gigantosaurus? I think we got a pretty good top end. Oh, but look at this. Goreclaw. Yep. Pictures you cast before greater cost less two less to cast. With our top end being as heavy as it is as it is right now, I think Goreclaw would be a good keep. Yep, that's not bad. We only need one of him. Um Palaka Worm. I think I think three green is a ha is a high <laughs> uh, that, yeah. Let me live my dream. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. I would actually rather put Poison Hip Archer if I'm being That honest. actually would be good. And yeah, I want we don't know. Them. Yeah. Um, Draconic Disciple is another good one because it adds mana. Yep. And then I will create another dragon. Yep. Um, and that's it for that's it for creatures in these colors. So we'll go yep. on to... And look, now our mana curve is looking a bit more yeah. even. Yep. And then again, we'll just well. cut down these creatures as we need to. So the last set to come out uh, this past year was Guilds of Ravnica. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. No, we haven't talked about... Well, we haven't talked about Instant Sorceries or Enchantments and the other ones yet. I think we've only been talking about creatures so far. So, no, we... Yeah. Oh, okay. So Guilds of Ravnica was the last set that came out. You and I have already talked about it. Uh, we already did a draft. Yeah. Having played with it a bit more, what cards are currently your favorites? I'm still Demir and Is it Niv? Mm -hmm. Is I I have a fun Is it deck mm -hmm. um, that that yeah you know and 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 Niv is it is is a lot of fun <laughs> when he gets yeah it gets to go off. Mm -hmm. um, Demir is always fun. Those are probably the two yeah the two ones that are mm -hmm. um, yeah especially a lot of fun. Um, not uh, not particularly ones that we are likely to go into here. I mean, That's we're not true. we're not actually well t super well set for for uh, using guilds uh, overall because the mm -hmm. the color pair because the, the color only pairings are, like because we only have one of the we, color pairings, which is yeah Golgari. we only yeah we only have we only have the Golgari pairing because so, we don't have Rakdos and, and we, we don't, don't have Gruul. Yeah. yeah. So this will be a better this will be a better basis of a deck in a month and a half. Yeah, which is when Rapid Calculations comes out, and Rapid Calculations um, will be having Gruel and uh, Simic and um, Orzov. Gruel, Simic, Orzov, Rakdos, and Azorius. Azorius, thank you. Um, I've actually again I've. Like we had played, we played a game before we started uh, recording, and you saw that I've been having fun with Demir as well. Yeah. Um, making making Demir decks is just so much fun. Um, but I've 
in Paper Magic, I've been playing a lot of green. A yeah. lot of green. Pet collect, Pelt Collector has been a great card to uh, yeah. play with. Yeah. Um, and we have enough big like. stuff that might actually be... Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, that might and, be a you fun... Know, you, have, well, you, have, you have convinced me that the pig gets in because you, yeah. you can see I have four of them now. Yeah, yeah. Um, the pig definitely goes in. Uh, this is a good removal spell. So good for removal. Oh, yeah. yeah. A little expensive when it comes to red, but still pretty good. Um, I've been having... I have a love-hate relationship with this card because oh, I... it's a four-drop. However, a lot of creatures are in my bin by that point, that four comes around, which means that nothing gets menace until under turn when it comes into play. So I have a love-hate relationship with this card. Um, never happened. Uh, I think I've used this at least once for good effect. Dead weight is fun, and it's also from um, Theros, if I remember correctly. I love these defenders, though. The Barrier of Bones is great. Um, where is the blue defender? There's a where wall. Go? Oops. Where did that blue defender go? You looking for that on Phantasm? I think so. Huh. I can't see it. You know, I'll make sure when I go back, to, when I look back, I'll be able to see it. <laughs> um. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh no, there it is! There it is! Thought Band Phantasm. You're right. It's right there. Um. Yeah, we've already talked about how much how how much we like Demir Informant, so we don't need to continue talking about that. White's also mm. been really fun to play with as well. Like, white cards that I've really enjoyed have been, of course, Blade Instructor. Definitely stays in any um, uh, any Boros deck. Uh, Luminous Bonds, which you've already said is a more expensive pacifism. Um, our Helion Patrol is great. Um, this, is, this is pretty awesome. Because yeah. if you put this in a Boros deck and then play uh, Goblin Instigator, you get two four free angels instead of two one on Goblins. It's pretty yeah. bad. It's pretty uh. bad. All right, so thinking about creatures from Guilds of Gothica and Jund Colors, how did we get to Jund? I don't know. Um, for just the ones that I have, who do we like? Definitely Bones. I mean, well, okay, so here's the thing. I like having one of each when it comes to one mana spells. And as far as one mana one drop, one mana one drops in red, who would you pick? Banneret or Torch Courier? Uh, I think Banneret. I think overall, yeah. I mean, I think I think it may it sometimes depend on other one, you know, other mm-hmm. other parts. If, if you have something that is really effective to give haste later, Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, but the ba- the banneret has that advantage of of being able you know being able to start pumping and mentoring mm-hmm. later. Mm-hmm. And if I have any more uncommon tokens, I'll try to get a second one. Um, Pig goes in just because I'm playing with you. Um, what else do we like? Port Cullis. Well, actually. No, I already have enough white, uh, green defender. Yeah. Or... I only have one iron shell beetle, otherwise I would put it in. Um, the bargent is fun. Yep. Let's put bargent in, why not? And where's our curve right now? Uh, we probably need more threes and fours. Um, recluse? No. Uh... Oh, God, this great. I love this card so much. Beast Whisperer, have you played this one yet? I have not played with that one. Let's put it in. It's great. Um, we have Gorspuller Shaman. Swarm, Swarm Guild Mage, yes. Because why not? I mean, we have Golgari. We might as well have the Guild Mage in there. Mm-hmm. 
Um, this one I have had problems uh, playing out well. Death touch is always fun. Do you want to put his only in here? I think three colors having the two having a lot of two 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 color ones is tough. Okay. Um, I like it. It's sweet. It's a sweet it card. Sweet. It's but, a sweet card. But I think it's 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 a it's a your Ingolgari, not Jund. It's true. It's very true. All right. Um, so let's review what we have right now, which is currently just creature cards. <laughs> we have True Druid of the Cowl. One. It's, oh, sorry. No, from the beginning. Two Grasping Scoundrels. One Goblin Banneret. Two Lanamore Elves for Pump. Two Dire Fleet Poisoners, one Buccaneer's Bravado, uh, one Stormfleet Swashbuckler, two Druid of the Cowl, one Swarm Guildmage. This is really good for continuing effects. Two Pirates. So basically, we've got a mishmash of stuff. And just oh, looking yeah, at the it. curve right now, we're heavy in black and red, low on green. And again, we are definitely very heavy into. Um, being aggro. Yeah, yeah. The question is, though, of the green cards that we have, is that enough to justify continuing to have green in there? Because this gets more green, that gets more green, that gets more other cards. This will help stop people from attacking us. Yeah. This will get us more cards whenever we need it. This will make our, our bigger cost cards easier to cast. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cards that could use it. Oh wait, no, power four, sorry. So that's power four, that's one, two, three, four, five, It'll make, this will make our five strongest creature types easier to cast. And it's currently probably that and the Beast Whisperer are the only reasons why it'd probably stay in green. Yeah. But then this would also help us get Bargen out, the Dragon out, the Demon out, and that Dino out. What are you thinking? I have a feeling that because we're still... You know, three colors is always harder than two and mm -hmm. and you don't have... I mean, we have a fair amount of stuff with green. I could just take it right back out. Let's try it. Let's let's try taking I mean, it back out and see where we are now. And just do. All right. So this takes us back down to twenty-two cards for creatures, yeah. which means we could put we could start putting the spells in. And if we're just limiting ourselves to the cards that came out this year, yeah. There was more things to choose from. Yeah. So if we are looking at just instant sorcerers and spells, I always like dead weight. Yep, dead weight's always useful. Or not always, but this is good turn one play just because it's fun. I'm not a huge fan, but <laughs> cast down is definitely good. Yep, cast down's good removal. So is murder. Yep. Ooh, right of bells and lock. We can have a theme. Oh, that's true. Demons and dragons. Yeah. Do we want to remove the pirates? Ooh, and you have you have Eldest Reborn. I do. Let's put that. That's in always there. yeah. That's what I do with that man because why not? Yeah. Eldest Reborn is good. I like that card a lot. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah, that is great. And I only have one ride of Bolt and Lock. Um, this card, I've now, I've cast this card and lost, so I don't think I'm going to put like just Master No, Hand. no, the, you, <laughs> you, that's one you need to build around specifically. Right. Where we're really just trying to have fun with good stuff. Yeah. This has or been fun not to even use. Fun. And then, of course, oh, being able to surveil is fun. Yeah, yeah. We definitely want some... So if you have to destroy a target creature, would you rather surveil after it or get three life? Oh, I'd rather surveil. That's, that sounds fine to me. Shock goes in. Yeah, Lava Coil is good because Lava, Lava Coil, Coil will get in. rid of... Lava Big Coil things. is good for it. But Lava... also Exile because that's good it's against... It's true, it's true. We're not doing Jumpstart, are we? We find one, that's good. I always like Active Treason, but we're currently yeah. at 61 cards, so we'll have to we'll make some. Oh, Active Treason is always so fun to use. They yeah. never see it coming. And it can be really, really dangerous to use against someone. I, the, the number of people I've killed with their own act, with their own creatures has been a lot. Oh yeah. <laughs> We are not multicolored cards because we don't have Rakdos. Um, how do you feel about Experimental Frenzy? I if it's I wouldn't put it in this deck. It's much more a um, it's it, it's it's good for you know. I think if you had something that's that's mm -hmm. got a lot of low to the ground. Um, you know, that you're you're going to be able to consistently cast the top card mm -hmm. from your deck. Mm -hmm. um, then, then right. it's pretty, it's, right. it's right, pretty right, fun. Right. You're right. Um, but but not, not, I don't think it's for the, the this kind of deck that we're building. Thoughts on Banefire? I, uh, Banefire could be, because Banefire can come, can come out of nowhere true. with a fair amount of damage. Um... Okay, so we're currently at 62 cards, and our curve does not look great. We have no, no, no. We currently have too many one drops, and also too many two drops. So let's take a look real quick. We haven't even put artifacts on land in yet. Okay. So one drops. So we got two dead weights, two grasping scoundrels. It sounds like we don't want pirates anymore. Yeah, I don't think we need the pirates. The, the Goblin banner at one, two shock, cast down, dire fleet poisoner. I mean, we can have pirates if they're appropriate. Oh, but that one I wouldn't have. The poisoner isn't worth it because we're right. not we're not all in on pirates anymore. All right, so that means that let's go ahead and get let's get a let's do barrier phones. I think that's a more appropriate one drop for us to get because it lets us surveil yep um and then rocking is bravado i think we that goes out now uh this is good because it doesn't require the pirate mechanic in order to do stuff yep um so we're taking these orc pirates out um that's a good use of fire true that means I can put one more active treason in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, active treason, where'd you go? Where are you? Oops. Oh. Ha ha. All right, so we're putting one more act of treason in. There we go. Okay. Um, Dragoning is still good, I think. Chupacabra is still good. That's awesome, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm happy with the threes and fours. Vibe's also looking really good. Six will be fun to use. 
and the uprooms are also fun. So we've got three more cards we can put in. And we're currently at almost even when it comes to creatures and non-creatures. Mm-hmm. Where would you put the bigger emphasis? And also, do we still have too many one drops? No, I think we're fine. I mean, one drop, you want to make sure that you have a good one drop. <laughs> um, and also, if we do have, I mean, because we have more one drops in spells, and that's going to yeah, help and, us and that get includes, rid of stuff. And keep in mind, and keep in mind, it includes like Banefire. True. Um, it's true. So, so I and Banefire is not a one drop spell. <laughs> um, so, um, three more cards go in. Now is it time for a direct card? We can put one in. Okay. I think we're just, yeah. This is as much. Um, do we want to put? Cargan Dragon Rider in. We do have a fair amount of dragons. We do. I mean... Yeah. Because if we put him in on turn two, we could put this in on turn three. and then You, don't have, Sar- you don't have Sarkin, do you? I do not have Sarkin. But let me see if I can uh, get him. Hold on. Uh, not collected. Do you have a Mythic? Okay, um, yes. I have one Mythic Wild card. I can get Sarkhan. Yeah, because Sarkhan would be pretty sweet. Cause it would actually would. <laughs> but do, so do you want Sarkhan Fireblood, or do you want Sarkhan Dragon Soul? Oh, we want we want Sarkhan Fireblood. Sarkhan All Fireblood. right. Sweet. Uh, one more card to put in. All right, one more card. Sarkin in the de- is Sarkin in the deck? Yes, he's right. Where'd you go, buddy? Oh, uh, there he is. There That's he good. is, right here. One more card to put in to make a minimum Even. sixty card deck. Another dra- Actually, we could have one of the other the other drag. We had one dragon, but not the other dragon. Just let's look at all the dragons. Um, bit flame. Or Bone Dragon. Ooh, Bone Dragon would be fun. Hellkite Whelp. Ooh. Yeah, I like how... Actually, Hellkite Whelp. Actually, I like Hellkite There's Whelp. Also, oh, wait. We already said we didn't like that one. I Well, I like... I mean, I, that was in the context of, of the other ones. This but, one ooh. has haste? Yeah, let's put Volcanic. Okay. Volcanic well, Dragon's in. All right. What do we want in our sideboard? Oh, we haven't done artifacts yet. Hold on. Let's see if there's any artifacts we want to put in. Really quickly. No. Maybe. Okay. So we're not putting any of the lockets in because none of them make sense. Um, we could put the... Dra- Did you have the dragon horde? No. Uh, I thought it um... I would actually put, like, okay, so here are ones that are staples for me. Fountain of Renewal. Traveler's Amulet. For fixing. Again, this is a sideboard. Yeah. Spine Construct, because why not? That just gets, that just puts one plus ones, plus ones on things. Um, and we also haven't put in any any dual end yet. Our encyclopedia is yep. good. Um, okay, that's it for artifacts. Now let's go ahead and put some land into this deck. Um, land. Okay, so for land, I have. Oh, I've got Cinder Barons. We can do four. Yeah, that's all we can. Yep. Um, what else? Oh, that's it. I suspect that's it. We yeah. can also do Memorial to War, or not. Nah. Okay. Nah, there's no, no benefit for the... Alright, so... This is our curve now. 18 creatures, 18 non-creatures, and 24 land. Are we okay with this? I think I'm we're okay with this. 
I'm okay with this. All right, what else do you want to put in the sideboard? What other things didn't make the pick that you kind of wish had? I'm not super on sideboards. Sideboard additional building is kind of what's the stuff that you... <laughs> Yeah. Okay, well, what have we not accounted for yet in terms of getting rid of things or being able to deal with things? I mean, you know, stuff like enchant. Yeah, you know, I think more, you know, even more removal, mm -hmm. you know, that, that might be for the, the you know, um, I, not, not. Maybe two more murders. Because you may end up needing more of them. Yeah. Getting creatures back might be good. Yeah. Um, there's another way to get creatures back. Yeah. I kind of want to put this one in the sideboard. This is also good for putting cameras on things. Let's put it. Uh, um, this is kind of fun. This is fun. Let's go to red. Human fire is fun. Mutiny. Smelt. Because who knows? I mean, yep. Okay. I think that's it. I think that's our deck. What's the date today? It, it is... is the 23rd. The day of the Christmas Eve Eve. Cool. 